So my topic is, does the human brain think that artificial intelligence is artificial? Um, so I will put it in three parts. The first part is, how does the human brain think about human intelligence? And the second part is, um, how does the human brain think about artificial intelligence? And the third part, would I would raise some interesting questions. So about human brain and human intelligence, this is a born um, ability of a brain and the psychologists named it the theory of mind ability. And in recent years, some people would like to name it the mentalizing ability. So why do human brains need to understand others' mind? Because this is the basis of human social life. It helps us to cooperate and making interactions, social interactions with other human beings. So a long time questions in the philosophy of mind would be how do we understand self and others? And how do we identify the thoughts, feelings, and desires that compose our own daily lives and those of our neighbors, lovers, and the foes? And this would combine to how do we understand ourselves and other people's mind. So I will introduce just a little bit of philosophy of uh, or, or the philosophical uh, tradition of this kind of thinking. So in Chinese philosophy, for a long time, like 2000 years, we also talk about something between differentiation between self and others, like in the Confucian. Do not do to others what you would not have them do to you. Something like this. And in Western philosophy, to understanding other intelligence, I mean human intelligence, there's two different approaches to explain how we can understand other intelligence, the other human's intelligence. One is simulation theory. The other one is theory theory. I will ex explain just a little bit of it. So the simulation theory is basically put yourself into others' shoes. So like in David Hume, he will say that in general, we may remark that the minds of men are mirrored to one another. As in Kant, the similar thing, and Nietzsche, and some other the, uh, philosopher who has hold the same thought for the simulation theory that to understand others, you should put yourself into others' shoes. Like, I feel myself inside of him, something like that. So for another hand, the theory theory, take this in the other way, that we have a theory of other people's mind. We don't put ourselves into others' shoes. We have a theory of what other people are thinking, are feeling, are desiring, when they are showing this kind of behavior. So... So these are the previous um, psychologist thought on the theory, theory. And for the last one, human's unique aptitude for reasoning about mental states was known as the theory of mind. So it's like we always want to theorize the world. So in, when we theorize the physical world, we have the theory of relativity. And when we're theorizing other people's mental world, we have the theory of mind. So these are the two different kinds of how do we understand other people's and other humans' intelligence or their mind. So the simulation theory and the theory theory, they are always competing for in philosophy. Uh, and the two, two people who are very representative in this two different kind of approach is two very famous detectives in the novels. One is August Dupin, and the other one is Sherlock Holmes. And in one very famous, uh, very famous uh, story by Edgar Allan Poe, the, August, the, the, the detective August Dupin said, when I wish to find out how wise or how stupid or how good or how weak is anyone, I will fashion the expression of my face as accurately as possible in accordance with the expression of his and then wait to see what thoughts or sentiments arise in my mind or heart. This is for using imitation to understand other people. So this is the simulation theory. And for Sherlock Holmes, 
we all know that he is like a thinking machine. He has a very big database for reasoning about what other people might be and what their what's their job or what's their thought, something like that. This is shown in the story. So how about the human brain? Do we use two different kinds of approach to understand other people? So for simulation theory, uh, 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 an interesting finding is for the mirror neuron. I don't know whether the audience was uh, is are familiar with the mirror neuron. So this, the mirror neuron has been found that in the promoter cortex, this kind of neuron, they will fire during when the, when the people, when the human is doing a goal-directed action, like you, you reach for, for a cup or you reach for, uh, to grab an, <clears throat> an apple. And they will also fire when you don't grab it yourself, you just observe another person to grab it. So that's, that's, that. so why, that's why they are called the mirror neuron. They fire not only when the people itself is doing goal-directed action, they will fail as well as when the people is observing a similar action in other agents, in other people. So this is uh, showing that when you executive, then you executed uh, reaching, uh, some part of the brain will lighten up, they will activate. And when you observe similar reaching, the similar part of the brain will also activated. So that's why they are called mirror neurons. So this mirror neuron system is thought to be a very important neural qualities to support the simulation theory. So how about the theory theory? Also, um, brain scientists have found uh, uh, several neural network, neural qualities. They are related with their writing other people's mental states, such as the media prefrontal cortex, the, the, the percunius, the uh, posterior part of the uh, cingulate cortex or the temporal parietal junction. So you, you just know about this brain, brain area. So actually the brain scientists, they found that the simulation theory and the theory theory, they're working together in our brain. And here's a, a, just a graph to show you that uh, this part, this special part of the brain, this network, the network they are uh, consisting of is very important to for the human to understand another human intelligence. So that means our human, the brain has a specific um, brain mechanism, a specific brain network to understand other humans' uh, mental states or and their intelligence. So that's about human brain on human intelligence. We have a special brain network to understand another human's intelligence. Then how about human brain thinking about artificial intelligence? Um, the humans are always think, uh, thinking of as social beings. So there's a social brain hypothesis uh, raised by Dunbar. He said that the human's brain is to manipulate social information, not only the information about our environment, but the so the information about our social information, uh, the social environment. So what is social? It's about another human being. So another human being or the social environment is very critical for the human brain. And the human brain are evolved and learned to deal with human intelligence. Mm -hmm. Like this is in textbook that, and like many other says, Says, it says, and like many other animals, human beings are not restricted by a sensory system to a particular part of the day. We do face danger. However, the biggest, the, the most dangerous predator for human being is not like bears or tigers or other animals. It's another human being. So FBI violent crime statistics suggest that, yeah, the most common killer of human is another human. That's why the, to understand another human is very critical for our survival. And our human brain is a very old system. It hasn't been updated for like 6,000 years. But 
nowadays, the society, the social society, or social social environment is very different from like five thousand years ago. The way we interact with people, the way we we do social interactions, is so different. And the artificial intelligence emerged in recent years. It raised a new question for the human brain: that how and the, whether can we deal with an, another new forms of intelligence? So, how does the human brain think about artificial intelligence, including the computer, robot, and、uh, the common AI, as a recent emerging forms of intelligence? I will show you some of the. I think very interesting findings. The first one is、um, between intelligence in, in interference. So human intelligence is always、um, affected by another intelligence. This study shows that they put a human in front of a, another human or in front of a, a, a robot. So they ask the human subject to do a vertical.、Um, Movement or a horizontal movement. While he's doing the movement, the other human being or robot will do the same, the congruent movement or different movement with him. So they will measure how much would this subject be affected by another、uh, agent's movement. And you can see from their their result that only when the human Subject was fa- facing another human、uh, agent. Their movement will be affected by that agent. But when is facing another robot, not human being, another artificial intelligence, the human being is not affected by the other intelligence. So this is、uh, between the interference. Uh, between intelligence interference, and the second one is when human intelligence plays automatic, automatic game with another intelligence. I don't know whether you know about automatic game. So you have we have two players. They will split like ten dollars between them, and the first play, player they will decide how to split ten dollar. Like I have five, you have five, and then the second player. Player, they have he or she will have two choice. Choice one, choose one is to accept play one's offer as it is, and the, the choice two will be rejected. Maybe the player one will said, "I will keep all the ten dollars. It will have zero." Then the player two will be say, "No, I don't want to accept it. It's unfair." So when he rejected, rejected, both player players they get. Nothing from it. So this is a、uh, the ultimate game is 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 to is for investigation on corruption and the the feeling of fair or unfair. And you can see to split a ten dollar half and half, most people may say, yeah, I will accept it. So something like that. So this very early, like twenty years ago, very early study published on science. They put、uh, a human player. They they put a human subject to play with the automated game with either human player to show it a human face or play it with an artificial intelligent player to show it on a computer. Like this round, you will play it with another human, or the next round, you will play it with a、uh, artificial intelligent computer. And what they found is first. They find that here they show that. So here,、uh, let me show you. So here you see different offer. So ten dollars split half and half, or the first one get seven, second one get three, and eight two, eight to two, and nine to one. So this is fair. This is very unfair. So the vertical. Scale is the acceptance rate, rate, and you can say, see that. So, so the player two they will accept less and less when it's more unfair. The interesting is thing is that the human pl- human subject they will accept more unfair offer 
from artificial intelligence than for human intelligence. So if player one says, I get $9, you just get $1. So most of the, if it's a human player, most of the subject will say, no, I won't accept it. It's very unfair. But if it's a computer to say, I will keep, keep nine, you will get one. But more people will accept it. It's interesting. And another interesting thing is that the human brain also showed stronger reaction for unfair human intelligence, for unfair human player than for unfair artificial computer player. The, the important brain area such as the ACC here and the left and the right insula and the right uh, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, which is also respond, res, uh, responds to unfair conditions. We, one is the ACC and left and right insula is for unfair emotion response. And the, uh, here the right DLPFC is for unfair cognitive processing. So they all respond more stronger for unfair human player, but not for unfair artificial intelligence player. <clears throat> so it's like we're more tolerance. <laughs> we have more tolerance for the artificial intelligence than for the human intelligence in the social, in the social interaction, something like that. So you can say, see that we, we use something as the functional MRI, which um, Dr. Professor Kessner also mentioned about, we use that to scan people's brain and to, to, to make them see different situations. And, and through analyzing the data, we can switch a part of the brain activated when people doing that kind of thinking, that kind of behavior. So using that, we can, we can investigate deep, deep, digger, deep, deeper for how human brain thinks about artificial intelligence. Uh, so some people may say that, well, that's 20 years ago. And people always think, maybe at that time, people think um, computer or artificial intelligence, they're stupid. Um, Basically, our human intelligence are the highest intelligence on Earth. So can we understand something that is smarter than that? So this brings up an interesting question is whether we can understand other intelligence from upward compatibility. So for chimpanzee, here's a very early studies to show that they show the chimpanzee, a human being wants to reach something in a higher place. And the chimpanzee can understand the human's intention and choose the correct solution for that human being to reach, to, to, uh, to achieve his goals. So it shows somehow that chimpanzee can understand human's desire. So they may have the upward uh, compatibility to understand the intelligence that is higher than themselves. That might be come from the evolutionary fitness that they, they have to survive in this world and this world have intelligence like human intelligence that is higher for him. But for human intelligence, for, long, for a very long time, like thousands of years, we don't have like a, a, a match for our intelligence. We are, another human being's intelligence is is the highest intelligence we're dealing with. So how about human intelligence? Upward compatibility. Can we understand an artificial intelligence that is smarter or not? So yeah, I will show you a series of studies that may suggest something. Oh, sorry, I think I may, let me skip, skip something. So here is a very, also a very early study shows that uh, we put the subject into the MRI scanner and make them watch movies of various form of intelligence, including a movie of human intelligence or human interactions. 
including a movie of robot machines from the cartoons of uh, Transformers, uh, including uh, cartoons of human inter interactions and also interactions from other animals. So how about, how do, does the human brain respond to all these different kinds of intelligence? Yeah, so, so interestingly, the results show that <clears throat> here, the very key area in the mentalizing network, MPFC, this area is only responding to watching the human intelligence, but not for the robot, a machine intelligence, not for human cartoons, not for watching other animals, only activated when watching human intelligence. That's, um, that's also a, a long time ago <laughs> study. So, so that brings up about, about the upward compatibility <clears throat> of this. So the second one I will show you. So in this study, we, will, we want to create an artificial intelligence that is as similar as human intelligence. It's not stupid, it's, it's just as smart as, as human intelligence. And we want to see whether the human brain can understand or use the same brain strategy to understand the, the, the artificial intelligence as for the human intelligence. So I won't explain the detail, explain it in very detail. So basically we have uh, three people standing in the line and, and they're wearing different uh, kinds, different colors of hats. They were, they were, they, they are uh, like four or five hats in total, and three of the hats are drawn to wear on them. And the, the agent B, he can only see the people in front of him, and he knows about the total number of of the hats, and he has to reason out about what color of what color of the hat he is wearing. So the different thing between A condition and B condition is that in B condition, the people in the, in the middle, the B agent is now replaced by a computer, by a computer agent. And the computer has, has a camera can shoot in the, 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 the head in front of him. And the, the computer can calculate and then analyze to reason out uh, what color of the head uh, the, the, the rod is wearing. So we ask the subject to reason about agent, human agent, and computer agent thinking. So the two forms of thinking are very identical, but one is carried by human intelligence, the other one is carried by artificial intelligence. So interesting thing we find that first for perspective taking, which is what color does the B agent see? We found we already found difference that only for human agents, the human such use a special brain area named uh, precuneus to perspective to taking the perspective of another of the B, the agent B, putting themselves into B's shoes. But for the computer agent, for AI. They only do visual analysis. They don't activate the brain area for perspective taking. They only use the visual area, the brain's uh, visual area to analyze, but not putting themselves into the computer's shoes. That's one interesting thing. Another thing is that when they reason about the agent's thinking process, we found similar uh, findings that only for human beings, they, they activate the perspective taking to understand human thinking process, but not for computer. And also this blue area means they deactivate, they inhibit the thinking. Well, this area is related with self-related, self-reference thinking. So to understand another human intelligence, uh, sometimes we have to inhibit our own perspective, inhibit our own beliefs, our own thinking, because others can have different thoughts uh, with us. But for computer in intelligence, we don't use the same strategy. We don't have to take computer's per perspective. We don't inhibit ourselves to understand the computer's mental process, to understand computer's calculation. Yeah, 
the human inhibit themselves when dealing with human, but not with AI. Similar thing. So this study finds that humans are using distinct neural cognitive strategies to understand AI or machine as compared to understand another human. It's not surprised because we just said that, well, the social brain hypothesis said the human brains are evolved and learn to deal with the conspecies. It may also explain some interesting phenomena, like we all know that the human versus AI um, competition in like chess, when Kasparov lose the game with Deep Blue, maybe it's because he's using different neural uh, cognitive strategy because he knew he's dealing with artificial intelligence, but not human intelligence. He used different strategy to play the game. Also for AlphaGo versus Kozie, the same. They, they know they're dealing with artificial, the computer, but not an human intelligence. Another interesting is in interesting thing is in the autism children. Well, the autism children, ASD patient, they all uh, sometimes, most of the time, they have challenge um, facing to another human intelligence doing social intent. They cannot, or they have difficulties making uh, social interactions with another human. But the studies, uh, lots of studies have found that the uh, ASD, the autism children, they can play with robot with no difficulties. Actually, the robot has been the, a part, the part of the uh, therapy for the autism children. So that might be also because the, the social, the brain social network didn't have to activate it when the ASD children is playing with robot. So all of this have raised some interesting questions. Uh, one question is, uh, to what extent would people or would a brain consider an artificial intelligence artificial? So in the previous study, as for the human agent and the machine, you can see, you can tell there's a big difference. One yeah. is human-like, the other one is very not human-like, it's machine. And in this movie watching studies, this the, the left one is you can tell it's human, the, the right one is very not human-like, it's, it's, it's robot, right? And this one you can all say all tell is machine. But nowadays the machine, the robot, has been very more and more like human, a human like Sophia, humanoid robot. So would our brain think the same? as before, as to this humanoid robot or this humanoid artificial intelligence. <clears throat> so a very interesting research, a recent research, uh, just published in uh, 2022. He, uh, the, the researchers is from uh, Stanford University and they raised a possibility that an hypothesis that the human-like appearance may have unique impact for us to interact with or understand with robots. So they use a very special um, behavior index named the spontaneous perspective taking to measure human brains or humans' reaction for the rabbit robot. So you can see here you have an agent uh, sitting here and in front of him or her, there's a number nine putting on the table. So in the first, so in the first um, breath, the people is looking aside. The second one, uh, she is gazing to the number and the third one, she's touching the number. So they will ask the subject, what number is on the table? So they find that when the, uh, the agent is interacting with the number, they will more, they will more of, uh, they will think of, more of them will think that the number on the table would be six in this person's eyes. So you see the VPT, 
which is the spontaneous perspective taking, that if you take this lady's pers perspective, the number is not nine, it's six, right? So the, the VPT rate will be higher when this agent is interacting with this uh, number. So the thing they are doing is that they, they change different form, they change to different form of the agent. You have the human form, a lady sitting in front of the, uh, the number. You have the human robot now, like this. Lo also looking aside, gaze and reach to the number. And the human robot Baxter, the same, doing the same thing. And the non-human robot, well, uh, moving aside, moving towards and uh, uh, move, uh, staying, staying aside and moving towards. And also you have an animal, a cat, looking aside, looking at and touching it. And also you have human-like android, human-like robot, very like human robot, looking aside, gazing at it and reach it. And you can guess about the VPT rate of different kind of human when they are seeing different kind of robots. Oh, it's not a surprise that the, the, <coughs> the higher the, the human-like appearance as for the robot, the higher the VPT rate is for when they are. It means if the artificial intelligence or the robot is more like a human, it's more human-like, it has a more human-like appearance, then the human brain, human brain or the human intelligence they will um, behave or uh, show more perspective taking, which is to think of it as another intelligence, just as human intelligence, and to take its or her perspective to think about it. So this is a interesting recent studies says that the human-like appearance may be very important or have unique impact to how do we think uh, artificial intelligence? Do we think it artificial or do we think it's just as human intelligence? So the second question would be to what age and how does human intelligence learn to differentiate between human and other forms of intelligence? So in the previous study, we show the human adults the human movie or the robot movie, and we, we, we find that only for the human movie, the adults activate, the brain of the adult activated the MPFC, but not for the cartoon or robot or machine when they're watching. So the, the researchers, they do a follow-up study and they put kids around 10 years into the MRS machine and scan and showing them the same movie, different kind of movie, human movie, robot movie. And you can guess what happened. So they find that 10 years old kid, they, their brain activate similar for human movie as well as for machine movie. So it suggests, it may suggest, well, there might be a lot of um, factors that can explain this result. But one maybe we, we, we might think about is that we don't born to differentiate uh, different forms of intelligence. We learn to differentiate different forms of intelligence. And for kids around 10, that's about 15 years ago, they haven't learned to differentiate between human intelligence and other forms of intelligence. But how about now? Now the the kids, they are growing up with smartphone. They're growing up TV, with TV. And how about them? Have them changed? Have they changed in their reaction to artificial intelligence? And to what age do human brain or human child learn to differentiate human and other forms of intelligence? And to what age do we start to think that artificial intelligence is artificial. So this is the second interesting question I will raise. And the third one, 
But I will say that does it really matter whether human brain thinks that artificial intelligence is artificial? We all know about the Turing test is that using human to test to, to differentiate whether you are interact with uh, artificial intelligence or human intelligence. But we know, we know now that the human brain is highly bonded with the intelligence of Kong species. And we, we, we tell whether another intelligence is human or not from very simple things like the appearance or other things. So maybe the human brain is not a good index to differentiate between whether an artificial intelligence is good enough. And we may have to think about um, how and whether um, the human brain is dealing, is um, trying to uh, adapt with the another forms of intelligence. So does it really matter? And do we need to have an, an updated test, not just uh, for the Turing test? And do we have a real good definition for what is intelligence and what is a good enough intelligence? So this is uh, the first part of the third question. And um, following that, we may think about artificial intelligence versus artificial human intelligence. So although the artificial intelligence is created by human being, but the intelligence, the forms of intelligence can have different um, appearance and different forms. So we may consider the artificial intelligence as an intelligence from another species, but not just as human intelligence. So recently, some um, researchers have raised um, questions or a perspective with similar concerns, like thinking about robots as intentional agents, or uh, this one, human-dog relationship as a working framework for exploring human-robot attachment. So yeah, we have a long time dealing with other animal intelligence. So maybe the artificial intelligence, it's not, it shouldn't be artificial human intelligence. And maybe you 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 have some, you have learned about, you have know about like intelligence of octopus, other minds. This book is very interesting. So the animal intelligence, they can have very different forms and very different dimensions of um, intelligence skills, cognitive skills, other than the human intelligence. So we may have to think about how to define a real good intelligence and thinking and taking artificial intelligence, not as artificial human intelligence, but another forms uh, intelli of intelligence, just as intelligence from another species. That might help the future human AI cooperation, interaction, and attachment. So the third part will be in the future. So in the future, we will live in a hybrid society with not only dealing with human intelligence, we may have to deal with artificial intelligence and other forms of intelligence. So this is this might be a new selection pressure for human brain development because we have, as I just said, we haven't met a match on intelligence for thousands of years. Now we have a match. The deep blue, the alpha goal have beat human intelligence. So we have a new match. We have a higher standard. I still don't know whether the human intelligence have the upward compatibility, but it might be a new selection pressure for human brain development to train us, to make us, to, to press, to push us, to evolve further. So what will be the future evolution and variation of homo sapiens of the human brain and human cognitive functions? It may be a interesting questions. And 
this will be my uh, presentation and talk. Thank you. And I will be very welcome to your questions and thinking. Thank you.